Okay, welcome to another session of uh, EGBS 202, Business Mathematics. Today we would, we would uh, study another technique or another project uh, investment appraisal technique, which is on annual worth. Now, annual worth is a little build up on what we just saw or what we saw in the previous sessions on NPV. Now, certain times, if you're evaluating more than a project, and both projects do not have the same useful period, it becomes quite unfair. It's more like saying you're not comparing them on equal platforms. Now, supposing a project has a lifespan of 16 years and then another one has a lifespan of 10 years, well, it is possible to say that the one with 16 years would have a higher NPV compared to the other one with uh, 10 years. Well, obviously, after the 10th year for the other one, the other competitor or the competing project, the, other, the subsequent one, could be running for the next six years. And that may not be a fair evaluation if you're going to consider them using the NPV approach. And so the annual worth approach comes in handy to say that, well, we would compare both projects using the NPV approach, but it will not be the final basis for our analysis. But what we'll rather do is, having found the, the NPVs or the net present values of both projects, we would kind of spread them over their useful life equally, so that we'll see how much each project would bring every period, so yearly. So instead of just taking their net present value, and saying that, well, this is how much this project gives over this period, we would want to kind of divide that net present value over their useful years and compare that you, uh, periodic sum that they will bring over the year. Then that would be more like a little improved version of the NPV. So this is how we go about the annual worth approach. So like I said, the name speaks for itself, annual worth. How much is the project worth annually? How much is our project going to be worth annually? So here, supposing we have, uh, and I'm sure we are all uh, conversant now or familiar with this expression, where P equals A over I, and this expression, which is say this is finding the present value for some uniform cash flow. Here, what we are interested in is A, right? So having found our NPV, we substitute our NPV into this expression. Now, the P will now become the net present value. And I'm pretty sure we are all familiar with the other elements in this expression. Our I is the interest rate, our N is the number of years, and then the one is a constant from the derivation of the formula or the expression. So, well, we'll continue from the previous session. We'll just take the information. Now, considering the first instance, where we were considering two projects, say project one and two, we found project one to have um, an NPV of 62,753.28, and it was supposed to be useful for 16 years. Now, what we're actually going to do is this P, or this NPV, we are going to put it into this expression. Now, if we make A the subject from this expression, this is what we end up having, PI, into bracket, PI meaning P times I, the present value or the net present value times the interest rate, all into bracket one plus I to the power N, then all that expression divided by one plus I to the power N minus one. Now, so I put or I substitute this information or give it this data into this expression, and this is what I have. Now, so when I, put, when I take my NPV, which is now P, 62,753.28, into this expression, giving the interest rate of uh, 6% and then the N to be 16 years. This is what I have. So this answer here is the annual worth for project one, meaning that now if I put together the entire, what's it called, the entire um, present value of, or entire viability of project one, and I spread it over 16 years, it means that every year I'll be getting 6,209.57. I'll do the same for project two. Now project two had 10,401.306 at its NPV, and it was supposed to be useful for 10 years. I put it into this 
expression where I am interested in finding the annual width, or which is our A. And then I have 1,413. Now, based on the annual width approach, I would compare these two values, the 6,209.57 and then the 1,413.20. Now, these two values, I will choose the one that has the higher annual width. Right? And here, between 6,209 and then 1,413, I will definitely choose 6,209, obviously. More is always preferred to less. And so based on the annual width approach, project one should be selected. So it kind of, it builds up a little bit on the NPV approach, that it, it takes into account the entire cash flow it finds the net present value, and then we take the net present value and spread it equally over the useful lives of the project. And that gives us, uh, let's say, a more improved approach on the NPV. But bear in mind, well, because we are using this in academic settings, if you, if you are given any question, try and understand what the question requires of you before you actually use the, the methods or the techniques. Do not just take uh, this thing, uh, questioning, and just go straight forward and go all the way down and find the annual way, even when you've not been asked to find it. Okay, another concept we are going to look at under capital investment appraisal is the internal rate of return. Now, the internal rate of return is a special technique which helps us identify that minimum rate of return or that acceptable minimum rate of return. In other words, we, 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 we kind of would say it is that interest rate that takes our NPV to zero, right? Now, we, it helps us identify the, the acceptable rate for any, any business venture. Now, definitely, if businesses would be involved in any form of investment or would want to invest their or sink their, their monies into some projects, they would want a threshold beyond which they will not tolerate uh, their profits or their returns falling beyond. And so the IR kind of helps us identify that threshold. So at that point, we will not be willing to, to tolerate any, any other interest rate. And so we say that our IRR or the internal rate of return is that interest rate at which our NPV equals zero. Now, when your NPV equals zero, what does that mean? Now, that is more like the worst case scenario for any business venture, isn't it? Now, now if I wouldn't make profit, supposing a, a project is not profitable at all, at least I should be able to recover whatever I invest into the project. Now, and so if my IRR or my NPV equals zero, it means, well, at that point, I have made some, some uh, efforts I wouldn't make profit, but at least I'll recover whatever I invested in. Now, sometimes, you know, in business, you will not always make profits. Now, you can say because you're not making profits, you would not want to invest or probably engage in some business activity. You will still have to keep your customers. And so, well, definitely, sometimes you may have to sacrifice that portion. Well, but that's just by the way. Okay, so for the internal rate of return, we have a basic or a simple formula that we use to actually find it. I'll walk you through the approach. There are some basic, uh, uh, let's say, um, caveats that we consider in coming back, but it's nothing uh, difficult. Now, the internal rate of return, or which we refer to as the IRR, here is expressed as N2I1 minus N1I2 over N1, N2. Now, what does these N or these variables actually mean? N2 means NPV2 or your second NPV. I1 means your initial interest rate. And N1 means your first NPV. I2 means your second interest rate. And first interest rate minus second interest rate. I'll take this again, but let me give you some preamble. Now, given a certain interest rate, you can find your net present value for a certain project. Now, so consider the previous cases where we had 6% for our interest rates. And we, given that interest rate, we would find a certain NPV. Now, that interest rate and that initial NPV is what we refer to as our N1 and then I1, right? So at your first interest rate, you find a certain NPV, right? So in our case, we had 6%, and then 6% will give us a certain interest rate 
for the first uh, instance. Now, what this rule or what this technique says is that having found your first interest rate, your first NPV at your first interest rate, choose any arbitrary interest rate at random, but just do it intelligently. So here we'll say, make an intelligent guess. Now, supposing we were given 6%, for the first interest rate, choose any value. It could be 12, it could be 30, it could be 40, it could be 13, it could be higher or lesser than the first interest rate that you chose. Now just choose any arbitrary interest rate. Use that interest rate to find another net present value, which we refer to as what? Our N2, right? So having found your first interest, your first NPV at the first interest rate, and the second interest the second NPV using your arbitrary interest rate which is the second interest rate or I2 you substitute it into this expression which says that your second interest rate which is N2 which you used the arbitrary interest rate to find multiply it by the initial interest rate or I sorry your first NPV forgive me uh, about that just a little mix up there now your first NPV which you found using the arbitrary interest rate, which is your I2, multiply it by your initial interest rate, which is I1. Then subtract your first NPV times your second interest rate, the one you chose arbitrary, and divide by the difference between the first NPV and then the second NPV. I'll take it again. Your second NPV times your first interest rate minus your first NPV times your second interest rate divided by your first NPV or minus what? Your second, uh, what's it called? NPV. Now, have this at the back of your mind. Your IRR will never or should never be negative. Okay, so if you have a negative ratio here as your IRR, then it means you probably mixed up something. Maybe your N1 is here and your N2 is here and that kind of stuff. So just be careful how you do. But at all times, your interest rate must be positive. If it's not zero, because we are saying that the NPV, the IRR is that NPV, is that interest rate that takes your NPV to zero, right? So your IRR can never be a negative value. Okay, so well, let's try this using an example and then see what happens. So we'll still use the same information we had from the previous sessions where we have project one, project two, initial investment 50K and 45K, and then the subsequent uh, cash flows or inflows from period one to period four. Now, I do this and then I find the, the NPV. So here, the initial interest rate given us was, um, let's say 10%, right? So when my I is 10%. So this, let's assume I1, this is my interest rate 10%. I use 10% and then I find my NPV, right? And the NPV I have here is 1,576, no, no, 15,764.26, right? As my initial NPV given that my I is 10%. So given this, I choose an arbitrary interest rate for the second NPV because I need two NPVs and two interest rates to find my internal rate of return. And so here, what I do is I select an arbitrary interest rate. So I kind of choose 20%. Now this should be your own choice. Choose any interest rate. You can choose 40, you can choose five, you can choose six, you can just choose any value, but just guess intelligently. Don't go and choose something like 1 million or 200%. Well, that's up to you. You would probably find a way of dealing with it, but just choose intelligently and, 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 and kind of get that interest rate. So I choose 20. So this one becomes my I2. This becomes my I1, you see it? So I take the same information for project one, but this time around the interest rate will be 20. I run it through the same procedure, and then I find my interest rate here, and I have 4,853.4. Is that clear? Right, so now I have two NPVs. This is the second one, this is the first one, and I also have 
two interest rates, the first interest rate and then the second interest rate. What next? I can, I can now substitute these values into my IRR formula, this one, and then go ahead and find my internal rate of return. Now, so here, I, I take my IRR, so my RR here is this expression. So what I do here is I take my I2, right? So this is, what I have here is, okay, so this value here, my N1, I multiply it by I2, right? Minus, now I come to the second one, N2, I multiply it by I1. Then what I do next is to find the difference between my N1 minus N2, right? And what I have is 0 0.244, which in other cases is the same as 24.4%. And so what we are saying is at 24.4%, my interest rate would be, uh, sorry, my NPV would be zero. Now, take, take this. If, if you have, you, once you're practicing, have some time at your disposal. Go to this question. Evaluate all these expressions at 24.4. You would have zero as your NPV. So try it and you would see. So I do the same for machine B, right? And then, so given this instance, I put this expression to the same thing. And so you also take the, the initial interest rate at 10%. I find the first NPV for machine two, for project two, sorry. And then I find, I take my arbitrary, which is 20%. I find the second NPV for machine two. I do the thing and then I find this. Okay. So then I have the two interest uh, rate. Now here, the point is I will choose the one that has the least uh, interest. Now given this case. So 24.4% and then 24.7% your decision or your choice based on the RRR technique would be to choose this uh, interest rate, right? Because this, it has the least interest rate. Okay, now uh, I hope this session uh, was very fruitful. I hope to see you in subsequent sessions. Uh, thank you.